patchwork of various models to describe what the world is, right? If all of those computational resources were isolated from one another, if you've got all the sciences and you put scientists and you just put them on their own, right, and and made them work in isolation, right, um, you wouldn't have what 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 you have. You, you, it would be completely impossible because sure. you need the pooling of computational resources yeah. in order to get that. Right. So, and, but no, none of these microstates we're talking about are autarkic, are they? I mean, Hong Kong and Singapore and all of these places are massively, they're the most open societies in the world. So I don't think anyone is arguing that fragmentation means informational isolation, quite the opposite. Yeah. Informational isolation is, is much easier in, a, in another type of uh, ecological system. Yes, but like this is precisely where where the question of these finessing, like the when you get pushed on this stuff and you start saying, well, actually, no, there are going to be overarching relations of this type or that type or the other. Even simply describing it in terms of like well, things will be open to information communication and transition. Well, no, I think that you're being ridiculous at this point. I mean, you know, this is coming out of a libertarian lineage. You're not seriously suggesting that libertarians make it as some kind of weird concession that they would have an open commercial system. I mean, that's the essence of the libertarian tradition. You know, it's like they're the only people who have ever consistently and, and, and relentlessly held to that notion. So this isn't I'm something not, that's I'm not arguing, they're arguing against you, and I'm arguing against... Well, this is... But, but I, I'm just coming out of this tradition. I mean, we're talking about Friedman's... Friedman's. I'm, I'm sorry that I haven't read the, the Friedman piece. So I, but the but the, the point is that there are there are unacknowledged consequences to radicalizing libertarianism in this direction, right? And 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 the the whole thing that I'm trying to push is that um, um, you end up having to acknowledge some kind of minimally transversal structures connecting the things that are being fragmented, right? And you need to do that even on your own terms, on your terms of optimizing of intelligence, right? Right. On those terms, right, in order to actually have optimality, you need some kind of yeah. structure. Even if it's not but, but I think that you're putting it a bit upside down. I mean, what you, game theory is a theory of coordination from, from units that have not got any kind of a, a, a authoritative overarching structure about them. They're radically fragmented, absolutely fragmented units of whatever scale, you know, states, individuals, it works at all levels. And of course, the whole result of this is how you establish, in your terms, transversal relations, coordination, networks, all of this stuff. I mean, this is, this is the philosophy of those systems, you know. But it's just the difference is rather than assuming that you've got some authoritative, centralized, uh, universal structure. You actually should generate that stuff out of the dynamics of a fragmented, distributed system. So it's you know to say that networks are somehow on your side of this rather than my side of this. I think is just not at all the case. All network theory is much more on my side of this. I completely disagree well. because, and I think the comment about game theory actually sort of like deals it to some extent insofar as actually no, no game theory isn't radically open. Game theory is about games and specific game settings, right? The rules are set in advance. Game theory is not about the negotiation right, of those rules within which you play. Right? You can use game theory to model situations but only given certain very specific assumptions about no, they're not they're not very specific assumptions. If you want a simple model, you have a simple model. But the but the game theoretical stance is based upon the elimination of presupposed relations between elements. So that those relations have to be constructed strategically by out of the interaction of those elements. Um, it, it's a it's an elimination of presupposed relations. And this is why it's scandalous to people. No, no, no. no. Because, it's, because, because it's not making assumptions to do with solidarity and universal agreement and all of this kind of stuff that, that, that people feel comfortable with. 
Um, you know, and this, this is this is where it, like the formalism actually tells against you, right? Right, right. Which is one important thing that is fixed in any game description, right? Any specific game description, yeah. for sure. But yes. that's the mathematical formalization of a game. It's not get, game theory is not describable just to the set of all mathematical descriptions of specific games. It's no, a method. It's true. For formalizing. It's a method for formalizing the emergence of strategic relations between distributed populations. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and, yeah. and it's an open domain. There's an infinite number of increasingly complicated games that can be modeled. They will all be game theoretical. I mean, it can. It's just like a. It's just like the. the the basic principles of computation. You know, you can anything can be modeled by a Turing machine, and it will be extremely complicated. And a lot of those things have not yet been modeled by it, but it's still computation. Not the, the theory of computation still holds, just yep. like the matrix of game theory still holds on games that are intractably complicated to our current capabilities for modeling. Clear, right? But so we're on the we're on we're on. On the level of formalism, we're happy with that to some extent, right? The thing that game theory can't effectively deal with is arbitrary revisability of motivation, right? As soon Any as you can say anything, the fact that you think you've got a level of formalism available to you in linguistic communication that is not available to game theory, I think is an illusion. If you can say it, game theory can do it. You're formalizing it and saying it to us. If you can say those words, arbitrary revisability of motivation, you're, and, and that means something, if that's not just white noise that you're just sharing with us, if that has meaning, then, then it is accessible to game theory as it is to the linguistic processor. Let me and very, very quickly why I am, I am denying your claims about the, form, form, the formalization here, right? which is that I spent quite a long time studying Jean-Yves Girard's ludics, right? Which is an attempt to provide a game, a sort of a game approach, right, to this issue of what what's possible to even start seeing something. What's presupposed in this even even the possibility of articulating something, right? And Ludix, by the way, is an alternative way to frame computation, right, because it can all comp you can you can you can describe computational systems in terms of the interactive behavior in it. Now, what's most interesting about Ludix, what's most interesting about it from a formal perspective, is that it is not game theory. It looks like game theory, right? In fact, what he, what, what Girard successfully manages to do is to find within the geometric structure of proof theory, sequent calculus, um, a kind of interactivity. Right? He, he shows basically how you can turn proof trees into something like um, strategies like choice trees, right? And show how these interact, right? But the the really fascinating and deep insight in this is that what is not fixed, although the possible act, the spaces of possible action are fixed, what is not fixed is the motivation, which is the other aspect of game theory. Game theory crucially deals with not simply interactive spaces in the sense of the spaces of possible action you can both deal with, but rather the the tendencies governing how you will both act given your different motivations and your knowledge of one another's motivations. Right? This is why I'm like there are there are specific formal reasons. Um, for rejecting flippant claims about the universalization of game theory. There are formalisms that are deeper, and these are in fact formalisms that describe the process through which the possibility of disagreement emerges from prior agreement. Nietzsche competition, and, and in, 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 in Girard's Ludics, Nietzsche competition is precisely terminating computation, right? Nietzsche competition, terminating computation, emerges out of a prior messy kind of collaboration, interaction which is not well typed and not well structured, right? So like, like, I'm I should stop at this point, but like there are there are very very specific reasons in the formalism to reject 
clear. Well, I mean, look, I'm not going to push you too far, but you can see why that why that would engender skepticism. I mean, like, you know, either you can formalize those problems, or in which case they're formal problems, and in which case they're tractable to game theory, or you can't formalize them, in which case why should anyone pretend that we can even understand what is being said? I mean, I don't, you seem to be wanting to have your cake and eat it here and saying that there's like these limits to formalization that we can formally demonstrate no. exist. And that's, no, 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 that's, absolutely, that's absolutely not what I said, right? right? What I said is a particular assumption of game theory that you were leaning on, right? Which is what? To formal it. Um, the fixity of motivation. No, why have I said anything about the fixity of motivation? I mean, you know, if you if you think that the variation of motivation is an important factor, there's nothing that's going to stop that being built into a theory of games about it well, at all. You is. just you just put it into a meta game where the ch changes in incentive structures are, are, are part of the game. I mean, the, you know, if you can formalize it. Game theory can deal with it. Uh, uh, but that's, that's trying to just impose some arbitrary limit on what game theory can do. No, no, and no. I just it's not an arbitrary limit, right? In fact, it's precisely the kind of formal limit you're accusing me of. Of <laughs> like, wow. but, okay, so here's the issue, right? When you're talking about the transition between game and meta game, right? Um. Um. At each point that you want to start talking about changes in motivation, which aren't necessarily the same as changes in the space of possible action, right? You have to retreat to some broader but equally fixed conception of of what the mot of, of 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 what the space of motivation and action are, right? Well, that's just to say it has to be formalized, and it has to be formalized just to be communicated meaningfully. No, but it's not. It, uh, the game theory accepts it. Like any formal theory accepts it, just because it wants to communicate sense rather than nonsense, doesn't it? It wants to produce a computable, rigorously computable model. If it was happy to just have blurry informal uh, suggestions, then of course it wouldn't have this problem. It's not about informality, right? It's about how you formally think about, right, these transitions, right? How do you so, so what you have is I've got one fixed model, and I go, that's inadequate, and you go, it's fine. I've pulled another model out of a hat, right, which is broader, right. The, there is a formal question about how that hat pulling happens, right, and that hat pulling and the formal study of it is something which is deeper than the specifics of the game theory that you're, and and there's and there's a, a an actual crucial upshot of this. Right? There's a really crucial and important upshot of this, which is what game theory can't deal with. Um, and, and, and this is where we get back into, back into normative political theorizing. What it can't deal with is the importance of the fact that often we don't know what we want. Right? And what I mean by that quite specifically is we have some idea, right? but not a complete idea. Of but that's informality again, isn't it? You're saying that you're saying the system that aims to formalize strategic thinking cannot deal with fuzzy, confused, non-formal strategic orientations. Well, of course. Well, you know, no, what, not, we, not but not. no one's communicating about that. All no. you're saying is just like it's fuzzy and complicated. And no, 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 absolutely wrong. Because you can formalize what you're calling the fuzziness. Right? There's actual formal questions, deeper formal questions, than the formalism you're putting forward. To th for thinking about... Yeah, I need a... Sorry, this is a bit... Uh, we've possibly gone off on a, on a weird time. Oh, I think that, yeah, there's a can of worms opening. We're going to get... We're getting... Because this will probably never end. This debate is going on, yeah, going yeah, on for a long time. It's interesting, but, it's, but I am sort of probably torturing everyone. Here a little bit. No, I think everybody's very interested in this really in this debate, or maybe it's just me. But uh, I just want to kind of like bracket this, and maybe we can have this. We can do this again. Fair enough. Uh, but it's it's it's, it's like one thirty for Nick. We're gonna. I want to make sure that students can have a wrap up with 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 the class that they what they're in. Thank you, Pete, for being here. Yeah, I, um, sorry. Yeah. 
for, for taking things off in a bizarre formal direction. I just no, no. I I think it's actually really relevant. Everything you've said to the to the issues yeah. that we've been trying to talk about. It was good for not knowing what we were talking about coming in. It was it was good. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have a nice uh, movie movie night. I'll 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 leave and I'll let everything wrap up naturally. Uh, okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much. Later.